Medieval monks were producing illuminated manuscripts or books by hand around Fleet Street for centuries. And when Caxton turned up with his press in the late 1400s, he probably had the same problems computers have today. But the monks left their mark. Ecclesiastical terms still survive in printing, mothers and fathers of the chapel. Flong, font, stones and so on. So when the great press barons moved in, the street was already greatly ennobled and steeped in tradition. The buildings they built during Fleet Street's heyday somehow reflected the attitudes of the titles themselves. The Daily Telegraph was one of the first arrivals, around 1830. But the famous telegraph building, in neo-Greek style with a famous projecting clock, did not go up until 1930. Most of the actual printing was done in the side streets and alleys, north and south of the street. Inside these great cathedral-like structures, every night there was a miracle. The miracle of newspaper production. A process so complex and so grandiose in conception as to retain a touch of romance, no matter what the news itself might happen to be. Life was always a rush. The telegraph went to press at 9.50 at night. 9.51 was tomorrow. And still is come to that. At the telegraph, linotype or hot metal machines built in the 1930s were used to assemble the blocks of print. This was newspaper printing until the mid 1980s a process belonging to the past now, rendered antique by technological revolution. But spare a thought for the old ways. And a thought is all we can allow. Printing newspapers had to become more efficient, limit the power of the workforce, reduce costs and grasp new technology. If that meant leaving Fleet Street and starting again, then so be it. Final product, 52 pounds of lead, or one page of the Daily Telegraph, all ready to heave onto the presses. A 40-page paper consisted of 80 of these plates per press, and there were 14 presses, or 1,120 plates before edition changes. No wonder the printers grumbled. The old presses were beautiful, Rolls Royces of the industry, and like some Rolls Royces, they at last became antiquated. They were built in 1928, at a time before television and talking pictures and transistors had taken away their monopoly. They were the slender link between world news and the British population. They kept rolling even when the Luftwaffe kept bombing. These temperamental old machines at the Telegraph turned out over a million copies a night, and they were deafening as they roared and clattered out the latest sensations. calculated 
but before their day was done, they had produced over 20,000 million newspapers. No wonder once in a while they broke down. But they started breaking down more often until finally they were shut down altogether. Romance rarely plays a part with speed, efficiency and quality. By 1980, much of Docklands had been flattened. Certain reminiscent relics remain, but the slate was clean. Here was an opportunity, and the Telegraph was the first commercial company to take it. The unions objected and Fleet Street sniggered. But soon, all types of commerce followed suit. And not surprisingly, the light soon dawned on the other major Fleet Street titles. And that was how it happened. In 1982, the Telegraph laid down plans for the most up-to-date printing plant in the world, West Ferry Printers.